What's up gamers? Welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. I got some hand traps here pictured up here because today I want to talk about the hand traps. So, as you know, the latest YCS happened this past weekend. Uh, big shout out, congratulations to Matthew B, uh, who won it all. Uh, but I'm here to talk about hand traps because the the idea of the hand traps being played in such a wide margin compared to decks nowadays doesn't really sit right with me nowadays so let's put in some context a few years ago right when sword soul was one of the best decks in the form up there with branded and flu and such like that how many hand traps did you really see from flu nine at most right ash and perm and then your flex spot being like maybe a valer or or an abiru or gamma when it was at three right you know you had you had your main core deck which was like at most what Twenty, which was like 24 main deck roughly nine main deck slots and of course like the free help free agents with the 10 years and stuff right that deck was so compact that you know it left not a whole lot for non-engine but back then the standard was like oh nine nine ten that's pretty good you know that's good that's good enough right and now there are people playing decks where there's 22 23 non-engine right now in terms of non-engine, right, it's mostly just hand traps, right? These cards provide such a needed interaction for the game that we play, where it's almost required to play them. Like, nowadays, if your deck doesn't have those kind of things where they can have one-card starters, they give you advantage where it's like, oh, I'm just going to refill your hand at that point, right? If your deck can't if your deck can't provide that kind of advantage this year, in, in this year, the, the deck unfortunately can't compete. Try as you might, put as many board breakers, as many jink cards you will find as tech cards. And I was like, oh, this deck will make the deck better. No matter how hard you try. If your deck can't compete, right, with the onslaught of 23-something non-engined, right, there's 80 different hand traps going to be thrown at your way. If your deck can't play through those kinds of hand traps, it's just your deck can't do it. Right, and we see this in full effect. Where one of the top decks is Fiendsmith Cashira. Now, this is mo this is not really more now not necessarily a shade or a shot to those guys because they are a much better Yugo place to me. But big props to them for getting such a phenomenal por uh, performance on those decks. The idea is. With those kinds of decks, the Fiendsmith Cash Tier, they're playing 23, 24 non engine, right? Meaning there's going to be tw uh, 16 in the main deck. The idea is you're going to try to win the Hand Trap War. You're going to win the War of Attrition. You are going to outlast your opponent in a grind game where they drew more hand traps than you, making you play, uh, unable to play the game. Meaning they're able to slowly build their board and accumulate more resources compared to this. Now, when did I think this started to happen? I think it started to happen right around Agar 4. Uh, when Agar dropped, Age of Overlord, right? The Diabell Star Snake Eye stuff, right? When that deck released, everyone kind of didn't glance at that stuff. They were like, oh, New Unchained and stuff, right? Oh, Infernormal Knights, right? But then people started to look at the Snake Eye stuff a little bit better, right? They actually read the cards, and then they, they all realized, oh, wait. These cards are actually really good, right? Great link fodder and stuff, right? And then it's like, and then everyone side to go around, right? And then eventually everyone's like, wait, these, wait, this deck can just build like the biggest link combo fest board, right? Backed up by like 80 hand trips. And it's just like, what the hell? We should be playing this. And that's what everyone did, of course, right? And then, of course, there's other factors that came into play, right? Bonfire dropped, right? You know, $90 per card, copy, yeesh. You know, uh, this the Fire King structure that came out roughly around that time, uh, around the time. And then, of course, you know, this uh, Fire King Snake Eye variants came around, right? You know, the Volcanic support, there's also that FTK going around. I don't think that, that FTK is doable now, I believe. It is a lot much harder to do. Um... But you can still do it, of course. Uh, 
right? Where the goal for that deck is you're not going to try to hand trap your opponent to death. Your goal is to FTK your opponent. And that's a little bit different from the other decks, right? Fire King Snake Eyes, they rely on the various points of interaction that the deck provides through Karen, Garunix, Ponix, um, of course, all the Link monsters that they make, uh, they make, right? Right? But now, everyone, but now, decks are being made where if your deck doesn't have a one card combo, of course, then, right, that's being backed up by like 20 hand traps, then the deck can't perform. That it looks like. Decks are being designed or the where Konami is just making the decks have the one card combos, they can walk away and they're all good to go, right? It does ev right, the one card combo does everything for the deck. The Snake Eye Ash does everything for the deck while getting you six, seven cards in advantage. At what point does where the deck philosophies, the deck building philosophies change where it's like we don't really want to play the 20 hand traps, but we also still want to win, of course, right? And of course, it all, all this stuff changes too when the fact that the mold charmies are in a play as well, right? In the OCG, of course, they also have Max C alongside the mold charmers. Granted, each of the mold charmers have their own use cases, of course, right? You can't slap them down all willy nilly, of course, but it still gives that mindset that's like you have to find a way to stop the hand traps, right? Right, while you while also you playing those hand traps as well. Of course, we have things like cross out designator and called by right, but there are some cases where you're not even playing the same hand traps as your opponent, right? What if you're on ghost bell and they're not, and what if they're on ghost mourner and you're not, etc. etc. Right, it, it the game has boiled down to stop whoever it's just stops your opponent first, right? Right, and of course, there are some times where you you might brick. You might draw five hand traps. It's like, all right, that's fine, right? Right? Just win the hand trap war, uh, grind out your opponent until you see a starter or a combo piece, and then you should be good to go from there. And th decks like that doesn't really feel like Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. It doesn't feel like Yu-Gi-Oh. It doesn't feel like I'm playing a game where it's like, oh, boy, I get to pull off this awesome combo, right? Of course, there's also those YouTube combos where they make the most egregious boards with like Baron Savage, Buster Lock, with the Colossus, all that stuff, right? But at some point, you gotta stop and realize it's like, is this really Yu Gi Oh anymore? Am I really playing a deck that had a, a archetype that has maybe four playable cards and the rest is just being backed up by hand traps? No. That doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like Yu Gi Oh. It doesn't feel like Yu Gi Oh. Now, I'm not saying the hand traps are bad for you, Gil, of course, right? The, I think they're an integral part to it. It was because it gives us interaction during your opponent's turn, right? This is one of the few games where it can you can do this, right? One of the few tra tra uh, TCGs that you can actually interact with your opponent during their turn, right? right? And it could be beneficial or it could be detrimental, depending on how it's used and when it's used. But... I, I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh is losing its identity, right? The, all the archetypes are losing its identity because it's like, oh, this is not really a Kashira Fiendsmith deck. This is really like four cards and then it's being backed up by 80 hand traps, you know? But I I do wish that what uh, Yu-Gi-Oh does slow down just a little bit. Now, not the Yu-Gi-Oh boomer kind. It's like, ah, oh, the game's gone too fast. Ah, oh, what's this Xyz or this Pendulum? But not, not like that. I wish the deck archetypes that they're releasing. Of course, I'm saying this when Crossout Breakers coming out soon. But I wish that the deck philosophies and the design they slow down a bit. Where you want to play twenty something in the as a main engine, uh, right? 24 something in the main engine where you have 60 non-engine right but you want to supplement a complementary engine to help boost the main engine of course right leaving maybe 9 10 non-engine i wish decks are more like this like the sort old sword soul decks right where it's fair right where one card combos does everything right but like i want decks to be feel fair to play against to play with Right? It doesn't feel like a slugfest. It doesn't feel like my opponent is just going to hand trap me to death, right? Well, I can't do any of my combos and vice versa. I want decks to feel fair again, right? And of course, not every deck is created equally, of course, right? 
All right, there's going to be some stinkers. There's going to be some winners. But I, w I want you to feel more fair again. And, of course, we're not going to get that feeling of fair again when there are things running about, right? Like, <clears throat> I hate to say it as a Dark World player, but, you know, hand-ripping your opponent for two cards by forcing them, by forcingly giving them a card to discard, triggering the bonus Dark World effects. That's not fair, right? But that's... Is that but that's really the technically the gimmick of what makes that deck work is they work off the discards, right? Sword so Tenyi worked, right? And that's fair because it didn't really have any one card combos. You had to reliably get worms in your hand, or you have to have worms to be able to discard or banish, of course. Right? Right? And surprisingly, what what deck helped that Sword so deck prosper? The Tenyis, because all of them are worms, all of them can, right? All of them help make their plays, and they're all supplemental engines to the main non engine, main engine, right? Dark World players, right? You kind of have to run another in order to make that deck work, of course, right? Right? And, and because of that, you can't run the hand traps as other people t do. You would have to run board breakers, right? And what kind of board breakers? Evenly, Dark Ruler, Forbidden Droplet, right? Right? But there are not enough, there's not enough board breakers to warrant, oh, it's like, oh, I have to main deck this. And of course, you can main deck those board breakers, right? But there's not enough board breakers in a volume that's like it's worth running. Unless you're on Tenpai, of course, right? I, I, just, I just feel like decks should have some corner case. Of, or I guess a limit of like, okay, what should be the acceptable amount for the main engine? What should be the acceptable amount for the non-engine, right? And of course, we aren't going to get those changes, right? Because how Konami does their things. They want, it's obviously, remember, they are a business. And the last, th first thing you want is your money. My money, and everyone else's money, right? They got to sell stuff, right? Right? Why do you think they make these more charmies at the Secret Bear Parody where they have one of the craziest effects in the game? They're secret rare. They sell, right? Right? They, right? And if those don't sell, well, they go back to the nostalgia, milk the shit out of Duelist Kingdom, Yugi and Kaiba and all of them, right? I just think that the hand traps need days, they also need to slow down as well because Yugi has gone too fast where we can't, we really also want new players to come in, but they can't join because there's so many things being thrown at them at the same time. And it's hard for them to understand it compared to everyone else. I think... I, I I do think that we should get just a case of where everything slows down a bit. Right. Everything slows down, right? We get much more fair archetypes, right? Try to at least diverse the format before, you know, all hell breaks loose, right? Because at some point, we're going to get a deck where you just run four or five cards at most. And then you run every single border breaker. Every single hand trap piece you could fit in that deck. While the deck recycles the same five cards all over again. And over and over until you win the grind game, of course. But that's just what I think. Um, of course, I'm just rambling like an idiot. But of course, I do think that the idea with hand traps... Should be toned down a bit. And of course with the deck building philosophies that come with it, of course. But that also comes down to the deck creation philosophies that Konami has chosen. As they have been releasing the decks nowadays, of course. With the new Rizal stuff, with Malice. Uh, of course, Snake Eyes is an egregious one as well. But I do hope that things do just slow down just a little bit. Because things have gone too fast. Anywho, thank you all for listening to me to rant. Ramble like an idiot. Uh, feel free to say what you want in the comments. Call me an idiot or say what you versely think. But other than that, thank you again. I'll see you guys next time.